nice solid blackfin tuna right there exactly what we were looking for welcome back everybody in today's video i spent a lot of time going through all of the different things that i've learned that have helped me live bait fish for blackfin tuna bonita uh, and just kind of any tuna species here down in south florida so make sure you stay to the end we'll go through all of my seymour maps and things i look for uh, tips and tricks as far as mapping goes to be able to locate and find these tuna finally i think we're in shallow enough They're so thick. They're so thick. You know, sometimes, sometimes it takes a while to get them, but once you, uh, once you find them, whew, we're thick. I just had to wait for the tide to come up the it was super shallow but all right guys it is it is late but we're gonna uh we're gonna run out and try to get ourselves a couple tuna here um i'm gonna rig these rods up i think it's gonna be a little bit rough out there but all i'm using typically i'd use like a 30 pound fluoro or 30 pound mono it doesn't really matter you know to me um a little bit lighter i think makes it a little bit easier to get the fish but this is a small like three odd live bait hook um we're gonna use that it's big enough right as long as it gets the pilchard on there you know, and it gets in its mouth that's all that matters so i'm gonna rig up these three rods and then we're out we're gonna gun it out to the hump and see if we can get a tuna uh, so to connect my braid I, i'm just using a 30 pound braid uh to this 40 pound mono right here i'm just doing a uh call it a crazy alberto knot really easy nothing special it holds um it's on my page if you guys want to know how to tie it but it's pretty easy and i've never really had any problems just got to test them good you know before you you go out like any knot and then to the i'm doing about eight feet a liter just so i can cut it if i need be and then i'm taking it right to that live bait hook and i'm just using a uni knot nothing special there either all right one more to go and we're out well what's going on everybody welcome back uh it is late right now we actually uh, i didn't know if we were gonna <laughs> even get to film this video where i was out searching for bait for probably like two hours i haven't been out that much because the wind's been moving and then Typically when, uh, you know, I get to get out a lot, usually I'm like on top of or tracking the bait, but when it moves like this, it makes it really tough. Uh, I had to try some new spots today, and you know, I, I know a lot of you guys always ask like, hey, how do you find bait? Where am I finding bait? Um, you just gotta put in the time. You know, look for the, look for the birds and um, pelicans in particular. Like, you find pelicans diving, it's, it's for the most part, pilchards right in the last like month i think i saw them diving on some finger mullet but most of the time they're diving on pilchards and that's it so you just got to find them they'll usually lead you that way um don't give up but you know just put it put in that time so we're, we're running really late right now it is 2 30 in the afternoon it's getting dark about 4 45 5 o'clock um and it may be rough out there so we're gonna run out um we're getting to the hump we're doing some tuna fishing today baby i want some sashimi sushi, poke bowls, all the good stuff. So see you guys in a few. So one thing I will say when you're live chumming for tuna, you definitely need a lot of bait. You're gonna see me throw a ton 
uh, out there just throwing live chummers and the the well was blocked out I, sometimes I'll, I'll just fill the back well uh, sometimes I'll fill the floor well as well it depends on how long I'm going to be fishing for I mean this I got four or five drifts of throwing a lot of bait out but the more bait the better the goal is that you're throwing out these live chummers so that the tuna that are sitting down in 150, 200 feet of water start to see that bait on the surface and they come up to attack. And the school moves itself up and will start hitting that bait on the top water. Uh, we didn't get much bursting or busting on the surface here today, but they were eating probably about 20 or 30 feet down. So what I was doing was a belly hooking all of my baits so that they start swimming straight down. And we had a lot of problems with birds. There's a lot of birds you guys can see going back and forth. And sometimes when you nose hook the, the pilchard, the birds will just pick them up right off the surface. So instead of fighting that, I just belly hook them and let them just dive straight down. And that was that bite anyways. I mean, you're gonna see it's kind of back to back bites here. And that's what tuna fishing is like. And I like to use two different rods, uh, especially when I'm by myself. If there's other people on the boat, I'd put three or four out. But, you know, sometimes you're just managing double hookups and you can see one rod's going off here. Um, my other rod, you can see the line just peeling out of it. And I know that rod's on as well. So there's not much you can do. You know, let Rodney do a little bit of work here and then hope that it doesn't get sharked uh, and you're able to get the fish in. But it's all fun. I love tuna fishing. Uh, double, it's super, double. super exciting and can get, get pretty wild uh, when you're out there and you got a good bike going on. So. All right, all right, boys. Benita. And get rid of it. Where I'm going. There he is. Small guy. So all I'm really doing is we're setting up and we're drifting over the hump and I'm just making a chum line with all these uh, live live pilchards. I like to squeeze them a little bit sometimes too because it makes them swim a little bit tougher and it, they kind of like sporadic around the boat. Um, but the key is leave your bail open and let line, let your line kind of fizzle out. Make sure your drag is loose because once you click it, you don't want it to pop out of their mouth. You want it to hook set. So I kind of just keep feeding baits out and let them sit. They, they're so far out, then I'll reel them back in and start over again. But this is really it. Once you get into a good school of them and you get them around the boat, should be hookup after hookup. So. Caught a lot of small blackfin tuna today. I'm looking for a nice one, well, a nice 15 or 20 pounder. So, hopefully, as the sun goes down here. There we go. There we go.
There we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. This thing. There he is. There he is. Oh yeah. All right. Got a little little tug that time. All right. A little bit better. We got a little better one here. No big drag rippers today. We're gonna rod me this. No, we're not. Oh. All right, this one. It's a pretty good fish here. There you go. Oh, no shark. Put the pressure on him a bit. Oh yeah, nice tuna, nice black thing. Oh, I got him. Woo, woo. Nice black thing tuna, nice tuna. Nice one, baby. Woo, 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 woo. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're looking for today, boys. That is what we're looking for today. Right there. Nice, solid blackfin tuna right there. Exactly what we're looking for. Woo. Exactly what we're looking for. Up. Just gonna lead him out. It's exactly, exactly what we're looking for right there, boys. Exactly. That was exactly what we were looking for. Right there, boys. Right there. Nice, chunky, baby. One thing I want to call out here, too, is you always see the line kind of pulling out of my rod. And if it's pulling and it's stopping, it's the pilcher taking the line. But you're going to see it. It just takes off and it doesn't stop. That's when you know you got to tune on the line. You're gonna see it right about there now. There it is again. Oh, there we go. No, he just pulled. Not every day you get the fish and see an enormous cruise ship take it off right behind you. There Seen that movie Serenity with McConaughey. I feel like we're out here. We're looking for the big tuna. Biggest South Florida blackfin tuna we're gonna catch today. There we go. There we go. Holy shit. Woo. Oh. 
I may have got my Moby Dick. I need to bring that other line in. You guys hear this fucking thing? Come on, get away from the hump. It's definitely a tuna. No! Oh, he smoked me. That was a big tuna. Or as a shark. All right, guys. Before we before we get out of here, let me show you guys um, what I was talking about. The hump. Um, these are down in like Isla Mirada. They're in Marathon. The 409 hump. There's a bunch of them, but this one's in Miami. If you see more maps, you can definitely find it. It's nothing hidden. There's a ton of people. There's always people. There's still people out here. Um, but I mean, blackfin tuna. You know, when you go over the hump, the hump goes up from like 500 feet all the way up to 300. So it's pushing all the bait fish up, um, like the krill and everything. So that's causing the, the tuna and other fish to kind of circle it. I've seen mahi got caught here. You know, I mean, a, you guys saw a ton of tuna today, um, but it's been pretty consistent, you know, especially when the blackfin are moving through. But uh, you can find, uh, you can catch tuna. I mean, right now, you know, winter time anywhere, to 300 feet 100 it just depends deep wrecks are usually good for tuna um anywhere that you know is going to really just hold fish or hold bait fish um you know it's i have another wreck that i always catch them in that's in like 320 um so it just depends on the day you know best thing you can do as you see is just live chumming um get a ton of pilchards so learn how to bait fish um, and find those pilchards. I know we don't always, or I don't always find them either, but um, I mean, like today, I put a two and a half hours in to find those pilchards, but I came out here and the bite was nonstop. So I could have just packed it in and went and trolled lines and would maybe got lucky and caught a fish. I highly doubt it or jigged, but we've all been there, we've all done it. We don't always find bait, but either way, it was a fantastic day. Caught a lot of fish. Um, we got all of them sitting in ice. I need to go get more ice on them. Um, because it they are like yeah a little bit in there but it's not hot right now so it should be fine um so we'll see you guys back in the house i'm gonna take off miami is looking nice look how beautiful that sun is sunset see the city back there just an amazing day and we get to run with my new blue lights i got look at those babies Ooh. what do you guys think of the logos i just got these and I'm working on working on something here I'm working on something so stay tuned for that got them right there too and then we got it in the back baby it's looking smooth so all right guys we're off i'm going home i'm tired i'm exhausted and i'm starving so see you